Hi, my name is Seth Whitehead and I'm the Executive Director of the Illinois Petroleum Resources Board. Today we're visiting with Jerry Robinson, the Technical Manager of Franklin Well Service. Today Jerry is going to show us the composition of hydraulic fracturing fluid used on 90% of the wells completed using hydraulic fracturing here in the Illinois Basin. Fracking occurs after drilling has been completed and involves pumping fluid, typically at least 99% water and sand with an additional mixture of chemical additives into the target formation at pressure in order to open up small fractures and allow oil and gas to flow through the rock. Fracking is used to complete 95% of new oil and natural gas wells in the United States. Although the process has been conducted millions of times across the United States for many decades, a widespread misunderstanding of fracking remains. Contrary to some of the scary claims that have been made over the past several years, fracturing fluid is not dangerous. The 1% or less share of frac fluid that is composed of chemical additives is primarily guar beans and borate, which is a fancy word for laundry detergent. Today, Jerry will demonstrate exactly what the 1% or less of chemical additives in frac fluid used here in Illinois is composed of. Jerry has used the frac fluid that he's about to demonstrate on thousands of well completions here in the Illinois Basin. Jerry, thanks for taking the time to come by and talk to us today. Thank you, Seth. I am Jerry Robinson, the technical manager of Franklin Well Service. And what I'm going to show you is what we do almost on a daily basis and have done it since the 1950s in the Illinois Basin. There have been fracturing treatments going on in the Illinois Basin since the early 50s. The first one, I think, was done in 1947 out in Oklahoma by Halliburton. And uh, the fluids and the system has changed tremendously, but most of them have always been a basin with water. And what I'm going to show you today is that, because that's what we use 99, almost 100% of the time is water. I mean, we, we don't use much of anything else anymore. But we basically start with just water. This is fresh water, tap water I got out of the sink. It's got a pH of 7, which is neutral pH, what your body fluids, most of that are. And if you, it's probably hard to see, but the bottom right head color here on this is a 7, and that's what my water uh, pH shows. And then what we're going to do, we're going to take the gel. The gel is basically just a uh, guar gum bean, uh, and they grind it up to a fine powder like face, almost like talcum powder. And it basically does the same thing as what uh, uh, like cornstarch or something does. You add it to water, it thickens the water, gives it some viscosity. The, and it's like soybeans or anything, only the guar bean has a tendency to increase viscosity better and stabilize better than what uh, soybeans does. They're actually working on a process up at the University of Illinois that could use uh, soybeans, but guar bean by far it does a better job at doing it. And what I'm going to do is just add about two grams of this uh, guar to the water and then shake it and stir it up and hydrate the gel into the water and it will build a viscosity of around 19 or 20 centipoise. Centipoise is just a, a measuring of the viscosity. I see the water has a viscosity of one by itself. It takes a couple minutes here to get this hydrated to get it gelled. Uh, but it just goes on and, and it's starting to do it already. A little bit more. But we use this when we want to do a, and we use this all the time as just what we call a linear gel in the fracturing business. It's just linear means it's just straight water and gel. No other additives other than the sand that we do. We do put a little of a bit of a breaker. A breaker is just another chemical we add, very small amounts. And the ones we use the enzyme breaker, which is little bugs that will biodegrade the gel molecules and eat them once we put them down in the well. And so it breaks the viscosity back. That's why we call it a breaker. Okay. Well, basically, I'll show you. It's hard to see, but it's just slick and slimy now. 
and you can see it kind of pull apart on my fingers where it's got that viscosity now where water wouldn't do that. It's just, you can see a string there between my fingers. Nothing has this about it, it's all mild green. You can eat this stuff. Most of the guar beans are grown over in India. And this is what we're gonna do. When, when we do a regular frack job down with a linear gel, it go that gives us real thin, maybe a tenth of an inch, inch uh, crack in the rock that allows us to carry sand out there. That's what the viscosity is for, to carry the sand. And you're pumping it down the well and it turns the corner to go out the formation. Uh, Mother Nature, gravity takes over. And when you turn that corner, if you don't have enough viscosity, that sand will have a tendency to fall with gravity. Just like if you throw the rock in a bucket of water or a bucket of this gelled water, it would slow it down, the gelled water word, over water, but it would still fall to the bottom, sink to the bottom. So we put this, the higher the viscosity, the better chance you got turning the corner. And when, when we got a higher porosity or a higher permeable zone we want to frack, then we, instead of using a linear gel, we use the same base, but we add boric acid or borax. And that's what this hit container is. But it's basically just borax, 20 mule team uh, borax soap, laundry detergent. We use a, a higher concentrate than what this is, but it's the same thing. But we use it to complex the linear gel to increase the viscosity. Like I said, this, the, the linear gel has uh, this 20 pounds per thousand. That means that 20 pounds of this gel to a thousand gallons of water, and will give us a, that, that 19 or 20 centipoid viscosity. Then when we complex it with the 20 mule team borax, it will give us about a 1500 or so uh, centipoid viscosity, a lot thicker. Let me mix this up now. Now, if you can hear the difference in the sound when I was shaking, but it did it pretty quick. Now what we got is we call a cross flank track. Same amount of gel, the 20 pounds per thousand. Then we add this boric acid, this borax to it at about one to one and a half gallon per thousand gallon. Very little of it. And we make this gel, cross-link gel. And now it's got about 1,500 centipoid viscosity instead of the 19 or 20. And that's, that's what we call the, fun, the tongue test. It kind of hangs out like a big tongue. You can actually put it in your hand. And it's just a big blob, kind of like what the the kids uh, use their goop or uh, the slime that you could buy for your kids. It's about as all it is—a cross-link fluid. But it, there's, there's nothing hazardous to it. It doesn't hurt you. The only difference we're using the guar bean and the borax to do it. And then if we wanted to. You know, we normally put the breaker, uh, on a linear gel, we use about five ounces per thousand gallon. On these cross links, uh, we use about 10 ounces per thousand gallon of that breaker solution I was talking about, the enzyme breaker, the little bugs. But it, and it'll break it in three or four hours after we pump it in the well, and it breaks back to water. And that's why we call it a breaker. But if for some reason they wanted to break it quick, uh, usually don't, but if, for this situation, for this trial, I'm gonna break it back to the gel real quick. I'm gonna break the cross light by just lowering the pH. So what I've got here is muriatic acid, 
just like you use at your swimming pool to adjust the pH in your swimming pool. I'm gonna use muriatic acid to lower the pH back because the pH, like I showed you to start with, was water, with a pH of seven. Let me do that first here. Now, I'm gonna have about a nine, pH of nine, if I can get it in the gel. Get to soak up a little bit here. It's kind of a dry gel, so not very wet now. But it's about a pretty much of a nine there. The third one from your left on top there. That's that's what the pH is now. So we cross linked it. All we did is increase the pH. The complex that was the boric increases the pH. But if we had to, we could break it back to the gel with just some muriatic acid, like you use in your swimming pool. It's nothing to be afraid of. In fact, what, what you buy at your pool store for your pool is usually 32% muriatic acid. This is only about 15%. So the, what you use in your pool is a lot stronger, so you don't want to get it in your eyes or on your skin, but you don't use that much of it to change the pH, and I don't either. Now I'm back to the linear gel. It broke the crosslink. And all I did was lower the pH. Back, eh, still a few blobs there. Didn't get it broke all the way. And that's the basic... Uh, fluid that we use in, in the fracks in Illinois Basin. And, and a lot of them out west, and you know, you hear about slick water fracks. Slick water, we used to, what we used to use was 15 pounds of this per thousand gallon of fluid years ago. Nowadays, they got a liquid version. Uh, they use about a, a half a gallon to three quarters of a gallon per thousand gallon of water. Very little chemical in slick water is just that they call it a friction reducer because it just slicks the water up like this, uh, but not as high of viscosity. You only need maybe a five or six viscosity set of poise for the friction reducer that you use for those slick water fracks. And then they add sand, like we do. So there's not much to it either. It's just very low chemicals. It's less than 1% of the total fluid pumped.